Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. So there are some really good sequels, some good romance sequels coming out in early 2024. So I am going to read three of my most anticipated ones for this video. The first one that's already been out for a little bit is The Secret Fiance by Katarina Amara. This is book five in the Windsor series. I will say, I've only read one book in the Windsor series, but technically this is still a sequel <laughs> that I'm really excited about. So I read book four last year and it was so good. So I'm really looking forward to this fifth book. It's going to be a Lexington and Reyes story. It's another marriage of convenience like the rest of the series is. So it should be good. I love Katarina Mara. And then another romance sequel that's just come out is My Dark Desire by LJ Shen and Perkeris Huntington. This is the sequel to to My Dark Romeo, which was one of my favorite reads last year. This is the second book in the Dark Prince Road series. This is going to be Zach's story. I already love him from what we got of him in My Dark Romeo, and I'm so glad that the authors decided to write like the series. I don't know if it was originally supposed to be a standalone, but I don't think the authors really plan to write more books. But since we love Romeo's two best friends so much, I'm glad the authors are writing books for them now. Before we get on with the rest of this video, I wanted to share today's sponsor, Belessa, and the fact that we're doing a massive adult toy giveaway, so stay tuned for more details. If you haven't heard of Belessa, it's a sexual wellness company that's created and developed by women. Their toys are made with the highest quality, they are 100% body safe, and they have toys for women, men, and for couples. I love the fact that this is a brand that believes that sex should be, you know, fun and empowering and 100% shame free. So I'm very excited to be partnering up with them today. I did want to share with you guys one of the toys that I have from them. This one is called the Pebble. Inside this case, keep it a little discreet, but you can open it up and inside is the toy. It is very small, very discreet, like you can compare it to the size of my hand. That's how small it is. So it's a rechargeable vibe. It's waterproof. The light pink color of it is so cute. I do admit that I love the fact that it's pink. Also, the toy is ergonomically built, like it's made to fit perfectly in your hand. So the Pebble has five vibration modes, there are no annoying patterns, and there are five suction intensities from beginner to black belt. So the Pebble is great if you're looking for something small, something discreet, like you can keep it hidden perfectly in this round case. Okay, so on to the giveaway. My friends at Belessa are literally sending out free vibrators and free gift cards to vibrators to everyone who signs up for my giveaway. All you have to do is click the link in my description to enter. It's a fantastic giveaway. I mean, everyone is a winner, right? A big thank you to Belessa for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out their website for all of their toys. And then the last of the sequels that I'm planning on reading is This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. If you know me, you know how much I adore everything Kennedy Ryan. And this is 100% gonna be another winner for me. But yeah, this is book two in the Skyland series. Book one was Before I Let Go, and that one came out actually two years ago. There's a bit of a gap between books one and two. So it's a very highly anticipated sequel for me and for many, many people. This one isn't out yet as of like when I'm filming right now. I'll probably save this one for last though, just because I do want to read it like nearer the publication date. And also I am planning on going to see Kennedy Ryan on her book tour. She's making a stop in SoCal and Long Beach. And I'm so, so happy. And also This Could Be Us is going to be our March book club read for Ravish by Romance. So we're going to be doing a discussion for it, trying to get Kennedy Ryan to join us for our live like usual. Oh, and this one is going to be Soledad's Romance. The whole series is about this girl group, this girl friendship group. So Soledad is the second one to get her romance. And I'm just excited for something new from Kennedy Ryan because yes, I have missed her books and her writing. So these are my three sequels that I'm planning on reading for this reading vlog. I'm not too sure which one I want to start with first, either My Dark Desire or The Secret Fiance. So I'll be back once I've chosen my first sequel to read. But also if you guys want to share any exciting sequels that you're looking forward to reading this year, if there are any books that you're dying for them to come out, let me know. I'm probably going to do another sequels video later this year because there's always going to be some good sequels to catch up on. But anyway, I'll be back in a little bit.
All right, your girl has finally read some of My Dark Desire by Parker S. Huntington and LJ Shen, and I'm like almost 100 pages into it, and I finally know what this book is about. It's actually a bit of a Cinderella retelling. That was a very pleasant surprise, but I am really enjoying it so far. So basically, the heroine, she has lost her father, she's living with her evil stepmom and two stepsisters because, of course, Cinderella. After her father passed, Pharaoh and her stepmother now own, like, the family cleaning business, but Pharaoh wants it all to herself because her stepmother does jack like she does not contribute to anything basically pharaoh is their house's maid so pharaoh wants full ownership of their cleaning business and she also wants to find this pendant that her father owned and i believe her stepmother sold it and it's currently owned by zachary's son so she <laughs> At the, at the beginning of at the beginning of this book she sneaks in to a party held at Zach's place in order to steal the pendant and Zach catches her in the act but instead of calling the cops on Pharaoh he kind of holds her hostage for a little bit so they can play a game of go like the board game which I've never played before but apparently it's kind of like chess but these two are very intellectually matched, which Zack doesn't come across very often. Eventually, Pharaoh does manage to run away, get away, except she, of course, in Cinderella fashion, leaves one of her shoes behind. So that's all in the beginning of this book. It was a lot, but it was so fun. I love the banter between Zack and Pharaoh already. I love their tension. And what's interesting about Zack is that this is a man who cannot stand to be touched because of his traumatic past and he's never wanted to touch anyone until now until pharaoh so that's gonna be exciting to see like how that plays out whether he'll want to touch her or he'll want her to touch him but oh my gosh one of my favorite things about this book and like this whole series are the text messages that we get between the three guy best friends between zach Ollie and Romeo. They're always so, so funny together. Like, they are the definition of bromance. And I'm still so happy that the authors decided to write a book for all the three guys. Like, thank God, because I love them so much in book one, and they're just as great in this sequel. So right now, Zach has manipulated it, maneuvered it, so that Pharaoh is now his exclusive maid, his exclusive cleaner, so he can have her in close proximity. So I'm gonna continue reading more of this. I'm sure I'm gonna have a great time with the rest. And I still cannot get over how pretty this paperback is. I'm really hoping that we get another special edition hardcover like we got for My Dark Romeo, because I ordered that thing so fast and it ended up being such a beautiful special edition. So hopefully we can pre-order one for my Dark Desire. Hi everyone! So I am a good way into My Dark Desire. I'm on chapter 47. So I'm like 238 pages into it and it's so, so good. I'm really enjoying it. It's funny, it's sassy, it's entertaining, and Zack and Farrah are just really good together. I love the fact that Zack is just falling so hard for her, even though he very <laughs> clearly doesn't want to. He is very much like a cold, unemotional type of guy. He has cut out, you know, anything resembling love or relationships, except for his friendships with his two, his two bros. But yeah, he does not want love. He doesn't want sex because of what happened when he was younger, when his father died right in front of him. But Pharaoh, being the awesome girl that she is, is just turning his life upside down. And I love romances that have that, where the heroine just knocks the hero off his ass. So it's been really great so far. I am loving that Pharaoh is becoming besties with Dallas from book one. Dallas is currently pregnant in My Dark Desire and she is hilarious. I forgot how funny this girl is, but she's definitely a highlight of <laughs> this book. So I'll probably be able to finish this um, later tonight. I really can't stop 
reading it. It's very feel good despite um, there being some heartbreaking moments that you learn about Zack and even Pharaoh. So yeah, just a quick little update. I'll probably uh, be back later tonight once I finish it. A final update for My Dark Desire because I finally finished this book and it was really really good. I don't know if I love it more than My Dark Romeo though so I'll give this one four stars. I think I gave My Dark Romeo four and a half. This one still really good but I didn't love it quite as much. I will say though I think I love Zack more than Romeo but Dallas the heroine from book one is probably my favorite of the two between her and Pharaoh. But anyway, Zack and Pharaoh were fantastic here. The way that these two become so obsessed with each other is chef's kiss, especially Zack. Like he's never felt anything like what he's feeling for Pharaoh before, so it's like this whole new territory for him and he just goes all in once he you know, recognizes his feelings. Pharaoh is it for him and she definitely makes him work for it, especially towards the end here. It was just a very fun read, not as over the top as book one, but still really entertaining. The romance is perfectly sweet and hot, like a good balance of both. Pharaoh was genuinely Zach's perfect match, the perfect woman to get him to open up his heart, to learn how to feel and love again. Oh, they're wonderful together. So if you did love My Dark Romeo, then you definitely need to read My Dark Desire. I will say though, I'm a little nervous for Ollie's book. Ollie is the third of the bromance here. He is the man whore, the player. He constantly makes, you know, crude jokes. I mean, they are funny, but they are still very, <laughs> very silly. From what we've read in these two books, he might be getting a romance with Dallas's younger sister. I'm hoping that his player persona is just that, a persona. I'm not sure how I'll feel if he really is as big of a man whore as he appears to be, but I'm sure that Parker S. Huntington and L.J. Shen will still make me fall in love with him. I'm not sure if there's a release date yet for Ollie's book though. It might be later this year. I'll have to double check, but I am still very excited for it. But that's all I have for this first book, for this first sequel. It's a great start to this vlog, so we'll see how the next book goes.
Okay, I'm back with an update with a new book update. So I started on The Secret Fiance by Katarina Mara. This is the latest book in the Windsor series and I'm like 16% into it, chapter 11, and things have finally gotten juicy. So this book is Lexington and Rhea's romance. I'm not gonna lie, I barely remember who Lexington is because I've only read one other book in the Windsor series and that was the book that came before this one. So I am not at all caught up on the series even though I told myself that I would. Um, I did not. The premise of this one is basically Lexington trying to figure out who his grandmother has arranged to be his bride. He wants to find out who he's gonna marry so he looks into it and finds Rhea. The arranged marriage though is not set in stone, he just sees her name and so he meets her one night at a club and they get along really really well. They have this amazing night together. They don't sleep with each other, they just talk all night and a couple weeks later, Lexington shows up as Rhea's new professor because he made it that way. I mean, I've got to love a hero who goes after what he wants. Like as soon as he met Rhea, as soon as he had that night with her, he realized that she is kind of perfect for him. They're both engineers, they're both into cars. The only thing is that Rhea believes in love, she believes in true love, and Lex does not so this is gonna be very fun and I do appreciate the connection this book has to the Off Limit series which was the first series that I read from Katarina Mara and I love it so we're back in Astor College we get to see a couple of the previous characters from the Off Limit series but yeah that's all I have so far for The Secret Fiance I will check back in once I've read more but I have a feeling I'll end up loving this one New update on The Secret Fiance. I am a little bit over halfway through. I'm like almost 60% in and honestly there hasn't really been much going on. Like there's not much drama happening so far. The only conflict we have so far is Rhea wanting love from Lex and Lex believing that he can't give her that even though he can't stop obsessing over Rhea, he can't stop thinking about her, he cares for her so much and he's super possessive over her. Lexington always gets super jealous over Rhea hanging out with her guy best friend Adam even though she has completely platonic feelings for her but he thinks that Adam feels otherwise. So since nothing much has been going on in their marriage so far, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop because I feel like something big is gonna go down. I know there's gonna be something major that's gonna wreck their relationship and their romance because it's just been too easy so far. It's been smooth sailing. <laughs> nothing bad has happened. So yeah, I'm just waiting for something big to happen, I guess, towards the end of the book. Something fun that I do kind of love is this robot that Lexington has. It's this AI assistant robot. It's kind of like Jarvis from Iron Man. The AI here is called Pippi and she's kind of adorable. She has emoji faces for expressions. I mean the whole book is very tech forward. Both the main characters are mechanical and electrical engineers. They both work in the automobile industry. Rhea wants to build the very first like completely solar powered car. So you could absolutely call this a STEM romance. Those are my thoughts so far. Again nothing big has happened yet so I'm gonna continue reading to see what else is in store. Also Boo says hi. <laughs> I am almost done with The Secret Fiance. I'm just chilling out right now with Boo who is taking a little nap. But I did want to mention that I have started on my third sequel, my third book for this reading vlog, and it's This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. I absolutely adore everything about Kennedy Ryan, her words, her storytelling, herself. I just love this woman so, so much. So I'm excited to read This Could Be Us. This is the second book in the Skyland series. It's the sequel, the standalone sequel to Before I Let Go. And 
I am also going to be seeing Kennedy Ryan later this week. She's coming to SoCal for a book signing. She's going to Long Beach, the Barnes & Noble at Long Beach, and I'm like, thank god it's not like <laughs> the ripped bodice. As much as I love the ripped bodice, it takes me an hour to get there, especially, um, after work. So thank God <laughs> she's coming to Long Beach, which is like 15 minutes away from me. I'm excited to see her and hug her. She is the best hugger I have ever met. Also going to be picking up my Barnes & Noble edition of the book. I had to pre-order it to get a ticket to the signing. I've literally just barely started this audiobook, but I already love it because it's Jacoby Diem. He's such a fantastic narrator. And also the note from the author at the beginning was so heartfelt. <sighs> I'm excited to read more of it. And I'll also update once I finish up The Secret Fiance. Anyway, I will check back in later. I do have some updates on the two books that I'm reading. Like I finished up The Secret Fiance by Katarina Mora and I am over halfway done with This Could Be Us. I am listening to the audiobook of this one mostly because I'm trying to finish in time for Kennedy Ryan's signing but I'm not sure if that's gonna happen in time although I still have like six seven hours to finish so it's possible. I am listening to it at two point a5 speed and I have four hours and 20 minutes left so it might actually be doable. I'm at 65% but I am loving this book to no one's surprise but let me talk about the book that I actually finished. So for The Secret Fiance this one it was really good. I did really enjoy it. Maybe not quite as much as the previous book. I think I prefer The Broken Vows just a tiny bit more. So this one is sitting around like three and a half, maybe four stars. It was still a solid read, but it was just a little bit too easy for me. And yeah, all the drama was saved for like the very end of the book. We have this big blow up that you definitely can see coming, especially after you learn about what happened in Lex's past. I like the drama of it. I liked seeing Lex having to grovel, win back Rhea, but other than that, there really wasn't much drama going on in general. Things resolved itself pretty easily and quickly. If anything would pop up, like the whole Lex being jealous of Araya's best friend, that went nowhere. But I did really like the romance. Araya and Lex were so sweet together. I loved the relationship between the parents, like Lex and Araya's parents. At first they're obviously very protective over their daughter. They don't want her to marry someone she doesn't really know or love, but then they slowly fall in love with Lexington themselves. They see how perfect they are together, so I love that developing a relationship between Lex and his in-laws. I loved how the Windsor family, they just so easily accepted Rhea as one of theirs after Lexington and Rhea get married. Like, she is truly their sister now, and yeah, there's a lot of characters now that we have four previous couples getting together. So The Secret Fiance, it was very sweet. Nothing particularly, you know, mind-blowing or unique, but I did enjoy it. It's very solid a marriage of convenience romance. Like, if you've read Katarina Mara, if you've read and enjoyed her before, you'll definitely like this new book. I am very excited, though, for the next Windsor book. It's gonna be book number six, and it's Sierra and Xavier's book. And yes, something does happen between them in The Secret Fiance. It's just gonna be like the rest of the series. We have another arranged marriage romance, but this time it's enemies to lovers. So I am gonna be looking forward to that one. And then my thoughts so far on This Could Be Us. Oh my goodness, I adore this book. I knew I was going to, but I think I might like this one a little bit more than before I let go, at least from what I've read so far. I really really like Soledad and Judah so 
this book going into it, I really had no idea what it was gonna be about. It's just a, a single parent romance. Both main characters are single parents and that's the extent of what I knew about it and that's mostly because the blurb is super vague. I am not a big fan of vague blurbs. I'm like tell me what this book is about please. But it's this vague blurb that talks about Soledad finding herself and falling in love. But for those who actually want to know what this book is about, yes, both the main characters do have kids, they are single parents, but it actually starts off with Soledad being married. She's been married to a man for a very long time, but then she finds out pretty early on that he's not exactly the man that she thought he was, and yes, he does betray her and their family and the person behind illuminating her husband's misdeeds is the hero. It's Judah. So that's why they have a bit of a forbidden romance because Soledad's kids do not like Judah for what he did to their father no matter how much the father deserved it. But yeah, the beginning of this one, it's messy. It's dramatic. It's like constant. Oh my god, what's gonna happen next? Soledad just could not get a break, but right now things have steadied a bit. Soledad is trying to find her footing with being a single mom, with being single, taking care of her kids by herself, and what's interesting is that she is actually a content creator. She's on TikTok, I believe. She does baking stuff. So that was really interesting to read about. I do really like her kids as well. They weren't as, they aren't as frustrating as the kid from Before I Let Go was. And then Judah is an absolute sweetheart. He, from the very beginning, he was determined to protect Soledad because he knew that she and her family was innocent. He just wanted justice against her husband. So from the beginning, he was helping Soledad out and he just wanted her, but it has been pretty slow burn. Judah himself is a single dad of autistic sons and you can really see the amount of care that Kennedy Ryan has put into writing about Judah and his family. So I'm going to be working on finishing this book up. I literally have 35% left of this book. I feel like I can make it before the seven o'clock signing for Kennedy Ryan. I am so excited to see her. As you can tell, I went to go see Kennedy Ryan. She stopped by Long Beach for her signing for This Could Be Us. And yes, I picked up my Barnes & Noble special edition copy. Although, I mean, it's like basically the same cover except the flowers are uh, pink because in the original, they're orange. Uh, do I wish they did a little something more with their edition? Yes, but it is what it is. But oh my goodness, that Q&A and that whole signing was fantastic. It's always so incredible just to listen to Kennedy Ryan speak. She always has such a way with words. She's so eloquent. Oh my gosh, I just could listen to her speak forever. And I also got to give her a big hug. Her hugs are my favorite thing ever. So yeah, that signing was incredible. It was everything. I'm so glad I got to see her again. It's like my fifth fifth, sixth time seeing her in person, but I'm always in awe of her every single time. So I do have an update on This Could Be Us because I did finish it. I finished it in time for the event. I just blasted through the audiobook, but I loved it. I think I'm gonna give this four and a half stars. It was such a powerful read yet again from Kennedy Ryan. This time, it's mostly about Soledad and her journey. She learns to find herself again, she learns to love herself again, all while falling in love with our wonderful hero, Judah, who just treasures her like the way that she's meant to, who worships her the way that she deserves. And then the relationships between the parents and their kids was so well written. You can see all the love 
and care that Kennedy Ryan put, especially when she wrote about Judah and his autistic sons. Kennedy Ryan was really speaking from her own experiences and from her own heart when she wrote these characters. And like every other Kennedy Ryan book, I highlighted this book like crazy because her writing astonishes me every single time. She always has, you know, those powerful quotes and one of my favorite quotes is at the end of chapter 41. It says, I'm a hornet, I can love, and I can sting. And I was like, wow, that hits hard. And then literally like three paragraphs later in the same chapter, um, is a quote, can I be the love of my own life? Which essentially encompasses what this could be us is about. It's truly about Soledad learning to love herself again, learning to appreciate who she is and what she is. And I could not be more proud of this woman. I admire her so much. So this book, definitely a new favorite of the year for me. I think I like this one just a little bit more than Before I Let Go, more than book one. But I am incredibly excited for Hendrix's romance now. Her story, she is the third and final woman in this girl group, which by the way is also another fantastic aspect about this whole series. I'm not sure if we have a release date yet for Hendrix's book, but might be sometime next year, 2025, but I am so, so eager for it. I mean, I'm always so greedy for anything Kennedy Ryan writes. I think later this year, she's gonna continue with the Hollywood Renaissance series, which is another one of my favorites. But that's all I have for this video, for this reading vlog. I read three highly anticipated romance sequels and I mean, I like them all. If you guys have read any of these books, any of these three sequels, let me know your thoughts. If you like them more than the previous books in the series, and let me know what other upcoming sequels you're excited about that are releasing this year. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Also, I kind of filmed this one uh, blind. I was not wearing my contacts, so hopefully it turned out okay. <laughs> Bye.